to issue a regular liquid asset that can be traded by anybody and nobody can stop you from trading it. You know, there's no um, restrictions on transfer. A normal li liquid asset, you can download Elements, which is the open source platform Liquid's built on. You, by default, that will connect to Liquid. You can issue one command, issue asset, give it an amount and what have you. And it, that you will have just issued an asset, which you can then send around to anybody else on the Liquid blockchain. So that's the standard Liquid asset. It's an application that runs on top of Liquid. So all the transactions of those assets are done on the Liquid network and they're all covered by confidential transactions. The AMP asset management platform is an API. You would call the API, a few lines of code, call the API and it would issue an asset. It would create a transaction basically that issues an asset straight into your um, in, into your wallet if you were the um, issuer. You can then uh, distribute that out to investors and they, they can exchange it between each other. But you have more control because of this two of two multi-sig. So one of the restrictions is the people who hold the asset have to have um, a green wallet because of this two of two system. So the tracked asset is where you don't need to register the investors, but the transfer restricted type, which is something that gets used for STOs and security tokens and the like, that does require whitelisting first. So essentially AMP contains a list of wallet IDs so green wallet IDs of, P of wallets that are allowed to receive that asset. So the issue would go through a process um, of KYC about their investors, make sure you know where they're residing and what jurisdictions they're under and what have you. And if they fulfilled the criteria, then they would um, ask them for their green wallet ID or their AMP ID from the green wallet, I should say. And they then add that to AMP. That person is now allowed to receive that particular um, asset. And the other benefit for the issuer, they can also view the transaction graph for that asset. So when the um, transaction comes off to green and it thinks, oh, this is an AMP asset and it lets AMP know about it to do its check, AMP will then store the plain text of the transaction. So everybody publicly will see um, confidential transactions on the liquid blockchain for those. And they won't know what asset was traded. Um, they won't know how much of it was traded because confidential transactions covers the asset type and the amount, but the issuer will be able to get a view of their asset, um, who owns it and when. And that's particularly useful for things like dividends. They may say at this particular date in time, um, they'll ask AMP for, you know, tell me which wallets owned the, my asset at this particular point in time, and I'm now going to pay out a dividend. And they could pay out USDT over liquid. This sort of... I think that's really cool, the automated, you know, dividend or reward payouts and you as the investor will, you know, you, you own some asset XYZ on your phone and then on dividend payout day, you suddenly get paid in USDT or Bitcoin or whatever it is that they're paying out in. For me, as someone who works at an STO exchange, I, I think that that's really interesting as well, right? That it strikes a really good balance between ease of use and then maintaining all the KYC AML regulatory obligations that we have so that you can you can allow users to trade it on the platform. They can pull it off the platform, self-custody if they wish, zip it over to another platform for arbitrage or trade peer-to-peer. -peer. I think that's... Um, that's pretty unique. Yeah, without the issuer having to get involved at every step or without some third party or intermediary having to, you know, manage the transaction or anything like that. It's just done through rules held um, yeah, within AMP and the transaction is done over the liquid blockchain. Yeah. The benefits for the investor is that once they have that in their wallet, um, once it's been distributed to them, they can send it to any other investor without having to request permission from the asset issuer. Swaps, as I said, are really good for this. So um, to do a swap in one transaction, you know, we can, you can send me USDT, I can send you something like BNM and that can finalize in one transaction, which it, which removes counterparty risk. So it just takes the trading and ownership of those kind of tokens, securities and tokenizes them in a way that 
um, enables people to trade them peer to peer as long as they're they're in this um, whitelist because there are still rules that apply to to these such things obviously. It gets really interesting if you can start streaming dividends on a really granular basis, right? Like instead of paying dividends annually or quarterly, what if we could do them monthly, weekly, daily, hourly? I mean, that, then that's just like a whole new type of capital market. That's that's really exciting. Oh, vesting shares as well. So if you started with the company and you had a you know an allocation of, of shares and you vested a certain amount each month, you you know you can actually be paid them out on that month. But like you said, well. Or, or year, but why is it done monthly or yearly? Could it could it be done less? Yeah. For the standard user who wants to, oh, I want to issue an asset. Yeah, and I want to call it this. And I'm going to do that. We've got something called the Asset Management Tool, which is a website where you go, you fill in the name, the ticker, what precision you want. Like that means, like how many decimal places should it go go down to? Is the minimum amount you can send to anyone and things like that. You fill in all these details and very much like the AMP example I gave earlier, the that web server will issue the asset in a transaction broadcast on the Liquid Network and it appears in your wallet. So although it, it broadcasts a transaction, it's your asset. It, it appears within your wallet. It's created in that transaction within your wallet. So AMP will remain an API, but the asset management tool will hopefully make things easy for regular users who are happy to use a web interface and their mobile or desktop app to manage the asset. I think it will be, it will mean that more people issue assets.